picture quality is one thing, but what about how long is it gonna last? Stop the FOMO. Are you afraid of missing out on a reliable TV? We're talking durability, long-term ownership. How long is this thing gonna last? Sure, it may be only five years before you replace it, but you want it to be a trouble-free five years. And if you've noticed, whether it's YouTube or even online reviews, nobody ranks the TVs based on reliability. And I think that ends up being more important than picture quality because this, you're arguing over a few nits of peak specular highlights. You buy the TV with the best highlight, but then you've been exchanging this TV for the next three months. Was it worth those specular highlights? And that's my point. So today, our goal is to knock on wood and hope nothing breaks. Taking over pieces and shares of all the sky high, check the movement is here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's talk about ranking the TVs based on long-term reliability. Because a lot of you have complained to me, hey, you know what? The picture looked great on the Hisense or the TCL or the Vizio, but then two weeks into it, the whole thing just doesn't even turn on. And then it hit me, wait a minute, this ends up being more important than all my ranting and raving about blooming and color accuracy. I've taken for granted that these TVs are going to last. I mean, it, it happened to me, remember last year with my Hisense H9F warranty claim, that dirty screen where they came and they replaced it, right? All of you at some point will have an electronic failure, whether it's a TV, a computer, whatever, and this episode is focused on ranking the TV brands and maybe the general model guidelines to help you in your search because maybe all you want to know is, look, we've reached peak TV. If we've reached peak TV and most good TVs are within this margin, I just wanna get the reliable TV. And you're right, so let's talk about it. Generally speaking, and we're gonna go from number one to dead last among the main brands. And the information I gathered was from Consumer Reports. I highly recommend you subscribe to them because the good stuff is under subscription paywall, which I am a member of because it's important for me to kind of understand, well, how often do these things break? I mean, is it just me? Am I just unlucky or is there a trend? So with that, I've digested Consumer Report data and I've pulled out very specific Reliability ownership, because one thing that's interesting is their owner satisfaction. Part of owner satisfaction is picture quality. So I've kind of pulled that out to a certain degree. Maybe 20 years ago, 10 years ago, even five years ago, the difference between great picture quality among TVs costing a few thousand dollars could actually be quite wide, that disparity. But today, when you buy a TV above a certain price point, say $1,500, the picture quality differences are minor. I mean, you saw my $5,500 TV. It's not significantly better than the Q90R, save for the color. And in some respects, it's worse. <laughs> so over a certain price point, diminishing return strikes you hard. So if you are planning to buy a TV over $1,500, this episode is definitely for you because their picture quality, for the most part, is going to be very similar. Let's say $2,000, right? Now, we'll begin with the most reliable TV bar none. And this includes aspects of owner satisfaction. It is OLED TVs, period. Sony, LG, and outside of the USA, I'm going to expand to Panasonic and Philips only because the technology appears to be what raises the reliability of these TVs, but I cannot say for sure because Consumer Reports did not rank Panasonic and Philips. Those OLED models are not sold in the USA, but I'm going to extrapolate, generally speaking, OLED from the mainstream brands. OLED then, if you buy an OLED, the likelihood of it being trouble-free is very high. I know what you're thinking, burn in! Burn-in was an issue in 2016, 
2017, but beginning 2018, LG panels did a very good job minimizing burn-in. And by today, 2020, I would say it's a non-issue. Why? Because our consumer reports the top two highest rated TVs for durability, reliability. Number one, the Sony A9G. Number two, right behind it, is the LG C9. And only because those are the two most recent TVs with the latest anti-burn-in algorithms. You know, it refreshes the pixels when you turn off the TV. It does a lot of stuff to minimize burn-in. Now, what surprised me is how far ahead in reliability OLED TVs are compared to the highest ranked LCD TV, which by the way is the Q90R from Samsung. Sony, at first I thought, wow, look at Sony. It's ranked number one in reliability, up there with LG, right? Sony here, LG right here. Turns out it was because both brands sell OLED. When I strip away the OLED models, Sony, LG dropped right there with Samsung. So it's not so much that Sony and LG are more reliable brands. This is critical. When you watch Consumer Reports or read a few articles, know that it is not accurate to say Sony is the most reliable. It is not technically the most reliable if its only reliable models are the A9G, the A8H, A8G, right? We're talking OLED models is what carried Sony to the top. If we take away its two OLED models from last year, leaving it with only LCDs, where does Sony fall? Right behind Samsung, LG, or right in that group of LCD brands. So as a technology, the conclusion is this. LCDs, the best LCD TVs in terms of reliability, Samsung, LG, Sony. Now that is a surprise to many people. A lot of people buy OLED because, wow, blacks, picture quality, right? The second reason to buy OLED, pure and simple, it is far and beyond the most reliable TV. End of story. And I have theories as to why. First of all, it is less complicated. OLED, because it's self-emitting, you don't have a separate light panel, you don't have a polarizer, you don't have a lot of transistors you have to control. It's a simpler, more streamlined technology. Which do you buy? Well, it's so close between the LG and the Sony that I believe the reason the Sony edged the LG has more to do with owner satisfaction relating to things that is not about durability or reliability, but about maybe the operating system, the picture quality, the Android versus WebOS, something like that. But if you stick with OLED, you could be confident knowing that this body of technology is significantly more reliable than the next tier. But let's say you're not interested in OLED. Given reliability is great, but for whatever reason, OLED is not in your religion. Then among the LCDs, all three TVs share one common pattern. You have to get the top tier. Specifically, the Q90R, the most expensive LCD you could have bought last year, ends up being the most reliable. Now, that isn't always the case, right? Money doesn't mean reliability, like a Rolls Royce. Apparently, with Samsung's case, it is. The Q90R is the most reliable model among all LCD TVs, but right behind it are the rest of the top tier LCD TVs, namely LG's 9000, 9500 series, Sony's 950G, and of course the Q80 and Q70 are QLEDs from Samsung. If you stick with a top tier lineup from any of these three brands, least be confident in knowing this is probably the most reliable model you can get for the LCD technology. So we have the OLED, then comes the high-end LCD TVs. Well, what comes after that? We have the mid-range LCD TVs from Sony, Samsung, LG, and TCL comes in. So the TCL 6 series is right in there with all four. So TCL is no less reliable than similar TVs in its mid-range, and TCL generally will be cheaper. So above 1500 is your high-end LCD TVs. That will be noticeably more reliable, but just below the $1,500 mark, you have TCL and 
the rest of the brands. So if you do choose TCL based on price, be confident knowing it is no less reliable. And I'm talking about the six series. Okay, below this group, it's pretty much high sense is very close with the H9F and then Vizio is right there. So Vizio's best TVs are the P Quantum, P Quantum X. The M series is less reliable. Let me explain why this pattern exists because this is beginning to make sense to me. LCDs, panels, technologies, whatever, it is more often than not outsourced to a third party OEM. So the higher end TVs have higher quality controls, maybe a better OEM who charges more, right? So this group of TVs generally are being made to a higher standard by a better OEM. The next tier of TVs, same types of OEMs, except it's a standard down because you're cutting costs. Since all the TV manufacturers generally share the same OEM, it makes sense that the same person making your TV, whether he slaps a Sony on it, an LG or a Samsung or a TCL, it's going to be very similar because he's charging the same price to his customer, one of the TV makers, and then the makers turn around and mark it up to you. I believe that these three tiers should be enough to guide you in your shopping. OLED, top tier LCDs, and that's basically anything over 1500 MSRP. And then just below that, it's either TCL or your choice of, hey, I like this operating system better, or this bezel looks better, or the sound system looks great, whatever. But this is pretty wonderful to me. This is news because within this, you have a full spectrum of price ranges. Below a thousand, and you get somewhat reliability that matches <laughs> Sony and Samsung TVs costing twice as much in the second tier of LCDs, right? So, does this help you make your TV decision now? Or did I just make it even harder? Let me know in the comment section below. And until next time, stop the FOMO.